Just as uh, a technology specialist, um, media planning and buying agency, um, we uh, are a division of Agents Media, um, which includes agency brands Cara, Visium, uh, Isobar, iProspect. Um, we're one of the largest buyers of lead gen campaigns uh, in Europe, um, and we have a, a, a very strong history in B2B and, and a clear B2B focus. Um, within that, we, we focus primarily on technology and finance. Um, I want to talk about two things. First of all, um, uh, the change in B2B media um, and also the change in the relationship between client agencies and media owners. Um, so to start, this is, this is how we kind of see the old world of B2B media. Um, and I think this is, to a large degree, this is how people still see B2B media. So old, old media, by which I mean trade, press, print heavy, um, basic digital, a lot of online um, in B2B or how it's viewed in B2B um, is often just a mirror of uh, a print product. Um, targeting vertical roles, the old you know, specifiers and authorizers, again via vertical print um, typically, uh, and you know, maybe some cover of the C-suite to, to, to make sure you've got authorizers also aware of your, your offering. Um, business targets viewed differently to other consumers. I'm kind of echoing here what, what Caroline said earlier. I, th I think we forget they're consumers too. They might be B2B, um, but you know, they, they consume media in the same way as every other uh, smart senior professional. Um, but I don't always think they're addressed that way uh, in terms of media. And regional silos, I think a lot of B2B is very um, uh, focused on one region or local, has a very local focus and, and it doesn't always work as well as consumer in terms of a, a more global approach. Um, the new era of media, obviously uh, new media has transformed um, B2B just as much as it's transformed uh, consumer. I think, again, there's a tendency to think about new media in terms of consumer marketing, um, yeah, especially with regard to things like social and mobile. But this is every bit as relevant to B2B um, as it is to consumer. Um, and we've seen three big shifts in B2B. Um, media habits and attitudes have fundamentally changed. You know, the, the old model that I mentioned earlier um, you know, is no longer uh, true. Um, Decision-making process has fundamentally changed. Um, you know, the, the old um, idea that you, you, you target one uh, influencer uh, or one or two influencers and a specifier is no longer true. Um, and the agency client media owner relationship has fundamentally changed. Um, so to address each one of those, in terms of uh, the, the media habits and attitudes, I think historically um, four forms of media dominated the B2B space. So print magazines, events, trade-focused sites, again, usually linked to a vertical trade publication, um, and data and research services. Obviously, the internet has forever changed the rules of engagement with B2B marketers. Um, in terms of the decision-making process, as I've said, you know, the specifier-led research model is no longer typical. Um, all influencers in the decision-making unit uh, have way more access to information now. They're much better informed, um, and that's, that's led to the decision-making unit being much more inclusive. And, and that has to be addressed when, you, when you're looking at how to target the, the, the most influential people in B2B. Um, and this is cyclical, but at the moment we're seeing a current trend back towards a centralised decision-making unit, especially with, with global campaigns, so you might have that coming out of one region. Um, in terms of the agency client media owner relationship, again, this has fundamentally changed in our view. The lines are blurring between the roles of all three. Um, you know, clients obviously engage with media owners directly. Um, media owners are starting to integrate brands directly into content, and, and agencies are building databases. So, so there's a, a lot of crossover between um, what the three uh, parts of the, of, of the circle are doing. Um, we think we should be embracing the new relationship, and, and, and I think there's a danger that some agencies will, will want to resist the change because they think that media owners are, are stepping on their toes. That's not how we uh, approach it. Um, our choice is to embrace it and, and you know, work in a, a much more open way with media owners, and I think this is to the benefit of all. Um, get my arsenal shot in there. Um, we see it as a collaborative model where agencies remain the independent arbiter. Obviously, media owners will do some of the things that agencies do, but obviously they've got, they've got an agenda to push their own um, products and services. So I think it, that's where the agency role is very important, as uh, remaining independent. Um, and the, the following case study, I think, is a good example of how we've done this for a, for a client, how we've taken this approach with a, with a client recently. So the case study is a client of ours, uh, Brocade. Um, the primary objective was uh, a lead generation campaign, um, delivering content, so nurture, you know, nurture the, the campaign fully, um, and also start the job of positioning Brocade as the thought leader in the Ethernet fabric space, which is a wonderfully exciting topic, as I'm sure you can see. And the secondary ob objective was to raise awareness of Ethernet fabric and Brocade's ownership of the space and to drive traffic to, to their uh, microsite. Um, we looked at it, uh, basically what we produced was a fully integrated campaign, and this meant working with not only several media owners, but uh, several, um, uh, I guess, departments within those media owners, so it's bringing it all together. So the, the platforms include everything from event sponsorship, webinars, custom videos, um, mobile RSS feeds, social media, there's a Twitter campaign, um, demand generation, so you know, this is, as I was talking about, the, the lead nurture program via Eloqua, 
um, and, a, and a broad awareness campaign, which, which in, includes some much more traditional media. So, you know, whilst I think B2B needs to embrace new media, you know, we, that we shouldn't be um, afraid of propose, proposing the conventional. If, if print media is still uh, relevant, then include it in a programme, as we have done in this case. Um, IDG, uh, we work with on this, um, and we work with a number of, of publishers, but I think IDG was a, a, a really good example of how we uh, worked closely with them across a number of things, and a lot of which are not typical, uh, or typically, the, the, the preserve of media owners. So, um, we started with an open discussion. You know, we, we don't believe in, in going this route of just giving a very fixed brief for, for a campaign such as this. Um, so, an open discussion with, uh, on the objectives with, with the, uh, the media partner, um, clarification on, on how, the lead had, how the lead campaign had to work, um, the campaign had to be uh, uh, integrated across multi multiple media owners. So again, although IDG were working with us on, on uh, specific content, for example, it was in conjunction with a lot of the other media owners that we were working with. Um, um, so, so what it... Oh, sorry. So um, I guess to summarise how that all came together, we, we believe the best way to drive success for B2B to, to clients is to explore all the new media opportunities. Uh, the best campaigns are built on open collaboration between agency client a media owner. Uh, it requires cre creativity on all sides, a client prepared to take some risks, that's, that's important, um, and a strong relationship between the agency and the media owner. Uh, the B2B audience is sophisticated and hungry for relevant quality information. I think this is often forgotten. Um, they're, they're treated a different way to consumer audiences than they shouldn't be. They're comfortable with new media, and they'll only fully engage with really smart, integrated campaigns. Just to find the test. 